What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk Talk Punch, the place where we talk about all those nerdy things you love to talk about. Thank you so much for joining us. While you're here, make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you'll get notified whenever a new episode comes out every Wednesday at noon to see what we're talking about. Kind of like this week's topic, the top five, yes, top five movies that we saw when we were probably too young. So my name what is Brody Hanson. <laughs> my name is Brody Hanson, joined by Charlie Hickman. As always, Charlie, how's it going? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. I I did get um, not, I, a little bit of constructive criticism from the home front about about this show. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to to my kids about uh, what we were going to be talking about this week, and and uh, and my my oldest son David's like, well, what are you? What's your list going to be? And I was like, ah. You're gonna have to watch, and he's like, "You guys, you guys talk too much in the beginning. You, you don't just get into the list." What? So uh, that's part so, of the charm of this is that. So according to my, according we just to my tenor, we just ramble. We gotta get to we gotta get to it. Oh what, what, are we, what are we doing here? So uh, so now I, I feel I feel like we should maybe just jump right in because I uh, we've already lost him. The ten year olds have already tuned out, which is maybe a good thing for this particular list because these are all movies that I saw before the age of ten, I think. Um, and uh, maybe one at eleven. So we'll we'll go. We'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yep. Remember, yeah. remember I've got like age ranges that I saw these because I don't I didn't like write them in my movie age calendar. But like it's true. Within a two year window, I'm 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 100 percent sure I saw these. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty sure that my ages are are accurate. Um, so we we decided to do a top five on this because well. You and I have no shortage of describing in detail top tens, and we thought with this list, it's probably going to be a little more context, a little more backstory. Uh, so we said, you know, let's just go with a top five for this one, and we'll uh, it on. we'll we'll see how we do. I don't know. Our our episodes typically come out to about an hour and twenty minutes, which it's not short. <laughs> like. But to be fair, about eighty minutes of that is just the intro before the list. So. Oh, come now. We got, we got, we got to get to these. Th- it's fuck. not that. All right, bad. it's not. No, that we've bad. just, we just, we, we just lost eleven-year-olds. Oh, so, uh, you know, keep, keep it up, bro. Twelve-year-olds are teetering. Okay. All right. Well, then let's get right to it. Top five movies we probably saw when we were too young. All right. I believe I am up first. Get out of here, Google what's your, Bar. What's your number five? My number five is The Crow. The Crow. So this one was my my oldest one, and that's why it's number five. I believe I saw this when I was 12 years old. This okay. movie nice. is very dark. Like, very dark. Probably too dark for a 12-year-old. Um, a lot of violence. Uh, you got some... some sexiness you got some uh potential incest mm. you've got like you know uh I'll, i don't remember the the incest i guess the, it's been a long time since well the the, the bad guy the, the bad guy and his and his sister are very weird together and even one of the other bad guys at one point is like it's your sister it's kind of messed up man do they actually kiss on the lips because i happen to know one of your favorite movies has a brother and sister sharing a very romantic and intimate kiss uh, not to the level of uh, Star, Luke, Star Wars, Luke what and Leia. Right Star Wars. Yeah, right. in in the there Crow, it's it's not to the level of Luke and Leia. Um, I remember being very confused at that. At, at you know, for being a twelve year old, <laughs> like, wait a second, yeah, like, sure. are they? What what is? I don't I don't get it. <laughs> what are they doing? Um, you know, and it's it's a cool story. I still I love the movie. It's it's great movie. That now that I've gotten older and kind of uh, appreciate it. Um, watching this at 12, I was like, I don't understand a lot of this. It's, it's, it's so dark. Uh, probably helped to shape some of the, uh, the, the, uh, darker elements when I was growing up of like, Ooh, black, I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear all black, you know? So yeah, it came out, it came out in 1994. So I'm, I'm guessing that I was about 12. Nice. So. So there you go. Uh, this this is this is one of the few movies I've had the experience with where 
I hadn't seen it and someone found out that I hadn't seen it and we're like we're watching this right now and uh, and we I, so uh, we had a like last period together in high school and and he and his name is Ronnie and uh, and he just he's like he freaked out but he couldn't believe I hadn't seen the crow and so he like dragged me to his house like as soon as school was over it's like we're going right now this is like 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 there was some part of him that was just injured by the fact that I hadn't seen the movie yet and it wouldn't be rectified until we got to his house to watch it uh which was it was very sweet of him it was it was uh so it was a, it was a fine viewing experience and then I met uh the reincarnation of Brandon Lee in college uh Tudong Tudong Two dressed days. exactly like Brandon Lee, had the Brandon Lee hair, yeah. made a crow short film in high school that's very good. You can probably find it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Tudong, Tudong, this is Tudong's favorite. So, one day, yeah, one day. I, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've seen it since then, bro. So, really? I might, that might be the one and only time I've seen The Crow. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so I might it's to, great. I might it's, need to give that a rewatch. It really is a really good movie. I haven't, I haven't watched it in a couple of years, but hey, I... It's no rapid fire if we're going to talk Brandon Lee, but, you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, rapid fire baby come on <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know I, the crow was probably his best but yeah it's dark don't show it to your kids it's not until they're older it's rated R for a reason <laughs> rated R for a reason alright All right, off, off to my number five you're number five my number five uh, Beverly Hills Cop uh, this was what the first movie I remember uh, seeing uh, nudity in mm. and uh, I, I was talking through this list with various members of my family I was talking to my wife about uh, her movie going experience and she shared with me when she was like maybe seven or eight she went to the movie theater uh, to see a movie like Three Wishes or something like that I've never even heard of and there was like a male butt in it and she was like she was very she, was, she got like incredibly nervous and she's like oh, I gotta tell my mom when I get home that I, that I saw this movie that had like a butt in it and so it's all she could think of. She's consumed by butt for the whole film, uh, and then went home and had to confess to her mom, "Mom, I, I've seen a man's butt in a movie." And uh, and to this day, she cannot look upon a man's butt without like tearing up. She gets very emotional, very upset. The moon, like a crescent moon, or like a full moon, she gets very upset. She won't go outside. Uh, just traumatized by man butt in uh, the 1995 classic movie that I've still yet to have heard of uh, Three Wishes but uh, this one uh, watching this with the whole family in like 1986 uh, on HBO I was about you know roughly uh, in that six to eight age range and not a, not a very appropriate movie for a child but we're just watching no. it uh, I believe uh, according to the IMDB parents guide uh, the f-word was used a conservative uh, what 56 times in the film 80s Eddie I... Murphy man he uh, <laughs> he had a mouth on him it was great and uh, if you if you have never read the IMDB parents guide uh, they can be quite entertaining um, I don't know if they're intentionally entertaining or unintentionally uh, but the scene that uh, that I'm referencing is described on the parents guide as uh, one scene takes place in a strip club. Bare-breasted women in skimpy underwear are visible to objectify women. There is also sexual dialogue for most of the scene regarding the enjoyment of the strippers and male arousal. No male nudity is offered to balance the female nudity. Uh, and all of that is very accurate and very true. And my dad said, look away. And so I looked away and over to this side was our big window, which just reflected perfectly the television screen. So I didn't know what I was looking away from until I looked away and then all of a sudden there was like bare-breasted women there on the is. reflection of our big window. Uh, and that was my uh, my first experience with the... Uh, and it, it, you know, Anyway, it was... I only remember it because my dad made the, the really, really half-hearted gesture of like not even covering my eyes or asking me to leave the room, but just turn your head over there, son. <laughs> Look at the window. Look at the window. Look at the reflective surface over there. <laughs> uh, and I did, by golly. Uh, so yeah, there. It was, that was a. Uh, it was kind of a funny one. It was a fun, uh, fun movie. And uh, you know, seen, it, seen it, I have seen this one since. But yeah. Just, just out of curiosity, since you have the IMDb up, can you look up the crow for the for sure. the parents guide? I'm, I'm really curious. You can be our parents guide. Uh, I will be the, I will checker be the for, guide. for this episode. On it. 
All right, so uh, The Crow was uh, made in 1994. Brody, mm-hmm. do you remember Do you remember who starred in it? Well, I mean, Brandon Lee. David, yeah, who else? Uh, the sheriff from Robin Hood. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> would you like... <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what do you want to hear? You want to hear the nudity, the, the, the violence, the... and gore? Oh, I don't know. Give me some highlights. Okay. I don't uh, want to spend too long. Nipple... I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, okay, we should, we should, have, we should, maybe we should put a parental guidance on this episode. But the breast and nipple of a dead woman are visible for approximately two to three seconds. A woman is seen from behind taking a shower, fully nude, but only buttocks are visible. Uh, Shelley is shown in bed, but Eric's hands cover everything, and nothing is visible. Hmm. Um, uh, let's see. Eric swings from the metal frame of his window and cuts his hands, makes them bleed uh, from the wounds, but they heal instantaneously. They do. Uh, a lot of stabbing and kicking. A lot the of crow stabbing. kills a man with his own knives. Uh, yeah, half a dozen. And of course, you know, Brandon Lee died during the filming of this, which they don't mention the profanity. Uh, but let's see. Name calling, crackhead, freak, and various religious exclamations. Oh, man. You know, odd uses and derivatives of curse words, uh, which <laughs> like Jesus Christ in a taxi cab, for instance. So there you go. Huh. I don't remember that one, but that phrase did not catch on after after this. I don't, I don't remember too cab. many kids walking around saying, ah, Jesus Christ in a taxi cab. Interesting. So maybe, maybe for the best, for the best, okay. because that's yeah. So well, there, you, there you go. OK, there, you go, some of the highlights there, there we go. The parents there we guy. Go. I'll have to look up. Right, this I'll, I'll load up. Guy. I'll load up for the next one. Okay. All right. So moving on what do you got for me? to number oh, f- number four. Number four. We are moving right along here. I have an animal house. <laughs> okay. So I was about nine years old when I saw this. Uh, I was. <laughs> Uh, my, my mom was date, was engaged to a guy. And so he was like, ah, oh, you know, come on over to my place, you know, and we'll, we'll hang out and, you know, you can sleep over here. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll watch, you know, a movie. I think maybe we went and like did go-karts or something like that. Um, eat some pizza. And so, you know, I'm camped out in his living room. And he's like, oh, you know, we'll watch this movie. It was my favorite movie in college. <laughs> um, and so we we watched we watched this movie, and boy, it's it's full of uh, drinking and drugs and nudity. Um, one is this is it, is this the first memory you have of being exposed to that, like in a film? Probably. Yeah, you know, especially there's there's one scene in particular where a woman is just in front of a an open window where she is, you know, just exposed. Um, that I remember, like it it went on, and I kind of like I was like waiting for like the cover your eyes or look away or something, and it never came. Look at the reflective surface, young and so man. and so I was like. <laughs> Am I supposed to look or am I supposed to look away? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um, you know, there's like one character that's in college that ends up sleeping with like a 16 year old. I mean, it's like, you it's know, bad, yeah. this, I'm, I'm re- I can't even. I don't feel like I can even read out loud the uh, the the, parent, the parents guide for this. There's, yeah, it's. I I was way way too young for this, and and you know just. Having all of the the sex and nudity, especially for a, for a nine year old, it's that's not not great. You know, it's not yeah. it's not good, and kind of the dangers of opening all that stuff up, and it's yeah, yeah drug use, <laughs> and so yeah, I should not have seen this movie when I was nine years old. No, what yeah. are, uh, these old college films uh, definitely do not hold up very well uh, in terms of the content the way that women are portrayed the, yeah. the joking nature of like some of like the you know sexual salty stuff like yeah and and it's like played for comedic effect uh which is not funny but uh you know there was i guess a time where you know it was i like I don't know, revenge of the nerds is another one where you know it's just like 
I watched as a kid and I was like, oh, I, I, that one, I, that's another one I saw too young. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of inappropriate stuff and, and things that certainly don't hold up very yeah. well. Yeah, one girl's like sleeping with her professor. It's like, man, apparently like you could just do whatever you wanted when you were in college in the 70s. I, you know. Yeah. I know it's... It's not representative of my college experience. <laughs> I, 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 I was married and had kids when I was in college, so... Were you really? <laughs> Yeah, I, that, yeah, actually, actually, yeah you, I, I went. Like, I went to college. To late. be fair, you took a. You I, took a yeah, you took a I, I, went, I went to college. I, I started college at twenty eight, and so my my oldest was two months old on the day that I started college. So, so yeah, I was. It was a lot, but but you know, right there on the poster, you know, a big big rated R down there. Um, I can't see what it lists. Uh, that that's a bit too tiny, but. Any any highlights for us from the parent guide of IMDb for Animal House I, I mean, that you can read? How, how graphic am I allowed to? <laughs> Not the, too graphic. What are the words you'd like me to avoid? Um, to, uh, I, I just I, I think maybe maybe just go check it out for yourself okay. for yourself if you'd like to see it. Um, well, yeah, a lot, a so, lot of bare backs and buttocks and uh, breasts and uh, yeah. things of the like. So yeah, like like I said, it, it's kind of a. Uh, they kind of did whatever they wanted and sex drugs uh nudity it was, it was all there and and i at nine years old should not have seen it it was <laughs> i don't yeah. know that i want to watch it now <laughs> but, but yeah so there there is my number four is national lampoons animal house national lampoon go. what a what a grab bag of movies national lampoons has kind of been over the years very, huh? yeah very odd they kind of uh, they yeah. did like animal house and then they did they did the vacation stuff, which I, those aren't family movies, but they're comedies. I don't know. And then they went. Yeah. I, then they did like the Van Wilder. I don't know. What is National yeah, Lampoons it, these days? I think it's just like straight to video, like raunchy stuff. I think. I think so. Straight, straight to streaming, I guess these days. So. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? National Lampoons. Who knows indeed? Animal House. Who knows All right. indeed? Okay. Charlie, your number four. Jaws. And just for you, bro, I got... It's, uh, it's only rated got, PG. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at that. Uh, Batman, Batman Why killing is he the a shark Sith? with a lightsaber. Why is he a Sith? Why does he have a you, red lightsaber? Brody, you know why he's a Sith. Because he's a Sith. He's a Slytherin. He is, uh, he is no, not a, a hero. No, no, no. He would have a blue lightsaber. Okay, first of all, the shark would win in this fight anyway, but let's just... I don't know. If you've got a, lights a lightsaber versus a shark? I don't know, Charlie. He's underwater. He can't even breathe. He's not even wearing a bat apparatus. He's just... Would a lightsaber work underwater, you think? I think probably not. There's got to be some kind of electricity involved in that that would either, like, electrocute everything around it, but... Uh, I don't know. Well, okay. that, you know what? We'll we'll, uh, we'll ask George next time we're all together, and we'll see. Maybe there maybe uh, it's a different kind of because I guess lasers work underwater, so maybe uh, take it back. Maybe. All right. So Jaws. Maybe tell tell us enough... tell us your Jaws story, Charlie. Okay. So I saw Jaws very young, and I, I realized as I was doing this list, I, I really could have gone on and on, because basically every movie I saw that was made from like eighty three, eighty four through like 1990. <laughs> um, there's a lot of like, before PG-13, there's a lot of PGs. I saw Ghostbusters in the movie theater, uh, which was scary when I, I was like six. And there's like you know, five, five maybe actually. And, and we were in Hawaii and we went with uh, some older family friends and like there's a scene in the library and ghosts coming at you. And uh, it library was, it was, was the scariest intense. part of that movie. You know, seeing Top Gun in the theaters and going home, playing with my fighter planes. Uh, you know, if it, if it was a movie that was in the 80s, probably I saw it. Uh, one, I guess one of, the, one of the nice things about, you know, parenting today is, is the amount of amazing amount of children's content that's like consumable and tolerable as an adult. Sure, uh, sure. And, and just, you know, but my, my, my parents, no, uh, we'd like to see this one. Let's just take the kid. We'll go. Or, <laughs> or, or family friends like, oh, you were going to go. So, uh, we, my, our friends in Hawaii were older, so I, I didn't see Jaws in the theater. This was, you know, uh, way, well before my time. I was like 75. Were you living in Hawaii so, when you saw this? 
Yeah. So I, <laughs> and I, and I only even better. And I only remember that because because of the beaches. So sure. Like I I I I hated beaches when I was a kid, and really for two reasons. And the first reason was when I was in Hawaii, uh, uh, and I was like maybe like three or four. Uh, we were at the beach, and my sister started screaming, and she's just kind of like you know move, shuffling her feet and screaming. And I came, she came running over to see what's wrong, and. What, what happened in Hawaii is people would just put hot coals right on the sand to like barbecue or do whatever. And then when they were done, they just toss sand over the top of it oh, and walk gosh. away. So uh, there's no pits or anything, no warnings. So my sister was singeing the bottom of her feet on these hot coals and I came running over to see what was wrong. And then I'm <laughs> singeing my feet on these hot coals. And I can remember like just scream, you know, screaming because it's just super hot, super painful. Sure. And my dad's carrying, you know, a child in each arm and like running to the car and, you know, we're off to the doctors and, and, you know, soaking feet and bathtubs with baking soda and like oh dealing with goodness. burns for like for weeks and like, you know, it was, it was just, it was, it was brutal. So that was bad enough. And then, and then, you, you know, you watch a movie where adults are like, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no such thing as sharks. They're not going to come near the water. They're not going to eat you. <laughs> And then we live near this beach, which I already don't like, and I'm already suspicious of because the beach burns you, Brody. That's what the beach does. It burns your skin and it burns your feet. And then I'm like, but what about sharks, mom? What about sharks, dad? And they're like, there's no sharks. They're not going to eat you. And I'm like, but that's what the adults said in the movie. Uh, and then by the time I was around this age, I, I, the Jaws 2 was out. So now I'm watching kids getting devoured on a banana boat. <laughs> you know, and like, just it was... I saw too young and I didn't want to go in the water and, and I just and I didn't like the beach and it gave me an extra reason to. And so then we, we went from Hawaii to California. So we really I've been able to avoid the beach very easily <laughs> my whole life. Uh, my friend Lopez is still afraid of sharks, very terrified of sharks. I, I, I no longer have a fear of sharks. Uh, and it was look it, for for, uh, you know, a five year old or, you know, it, it seemed like a very rational thing to be afraid of. Like those yeah. things are real. And they swim in that water there that's freezing cold next to the sand that burns your feet skin off? No, thank you. Like, this is like, well, you know, yeah, Tyrannosaurus Rex, sure, he's real, but we can go in the jungle and play or whatever. You know, he might eat you, but probably not. It's like, well, you know what we, you know what we could do is just not go in the jungle. Like, that seems simple. We'll just avoid the, we won't go to Jurassic Park or whatever. You know, we, we'll just stay away from the place where those things, there's a 0% chance I'm gonna get eaten by a shark on land like a zero like and then sharknado came out and now there's a whole new generation of kids sure they're just terrified that sharks will get that's a whole nother uh but anyway yeah it was uh it, living so close to water my whole life and then and then having this introduced so young it kind of put, put a bad taste in my mouth uh, about the beach but i have recovered nicely love myself some beach volleyball i still don't uh i'm still not a big fan of the cold beach water but on a hot summer's day it's not bad it's very interesting that from this poster, this movie's only rated PG. Yeah, I mean, was well, seventy five? They didn't. They didn't have PG thirteen. Th- yeah, right? there wasn't PG thirteen. Didn't, ex- didn't exist. But it's not R. No. For for people being, you know, eaten by sharks. There's there's you know there's blood in this. Would you um, Would you like to hear some of the parents' guy? Sure. Yeah. So one of the things that Jaws did really well was to kind of hint at the gore and not necessarily show you the gore. So sure, for instance, sure. a teenage girl's hand missing one finger turns up on the beach, no blood. Mm-hmm. A man's severed head appears in the hull of a sunken boat. One of his eye sockets is empty. Quite gruesome. That's uh, quote, quote, unquote. A man is dragged out of a rowboat by a shark. He is partially seen in the mouth as it bites down. It's somewhat obscured by the bubbles in the water and his bloody severed leg is then sinking to the bottom of the ocean. You know, then and then like that blood cloud comes up. Yeah, yeah. You know, so stuff like that. You know, it was, you know, so I like I. I'm not saying it should. It definitely shouldn't be PG. This is, <laughs> I mean, like, like if, if you're looking down a list of PG like movies PG. and then you get to this one, you're like, wait a minute, wait, wait a, a minute, se- wait a second, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second. Yeah, <laughs> gosh, I mean, jeez, PG. Yeah, there yeah, was a, yeah, yeah. I do like, <laughs> I do like the um, a t- uh, in the nudity guide. Uh, teenage girl goes skinny dipping. It is at night. But the silhouette of her bare breast is briefly seen. Her butt is seen. Uh, the ca- as the camera approaches the swimmer, it becomes evident that she is completely naked. Uh, like wow, like that's, that's someone sitting here just just, just writing detailed. this detailed out. Very <laughs> yeah. detailed parent guide. 
I don't, I don't like. I spent a little while since I've seen it, but I'm pretty sure you do not see. So I don't think, I think it's anything. all implied nudity. There's no. So I don't know. But oh, interesting. Yeah. It's... A woman asks a man if he wants to get drunk and fool around, implying sex. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you, thanks, parents, guide. So, if you're on the fence of whether or not to show this to your young children, you may want to know that that, that they are implying sex when they say that. The shark eating is fine, though. Yeah. Uh, huh? How funny. Anyway. Yeah, boy, that's that's wild that that is that that is PG. Parental yeah. guidance. That's if all. Just going by the rating systems, you know. That's what's the parent to do? Nothing. Yeah, Ghostbusters was PG. Um, yeah. Well, it wasn't Raiders till... of the Lost Ark was was PG. Yeah, it, I mean it was, it was uh, faces melting. Um, or was it? It was, what te- was the first PG. Tem- well, Temple of Doom and Gremlins were kind of the ones that that started the PG thirteen. I don't know what the first Red Dawn was the first PG thirteen movie, July first, nineteen eighty four. Parents are strongly cautioned. I did see that. I saw that as soon as I could. Yeah, I saw that in the theaters. Um, uh, I think I, I just saw in the theaters or right. We had HBO, so there's like this disconnect because I saw a lot of these in the theaters, and then I saw some of these just at home on either VHS because we rent we rented a lot. We would go to the the, blo- the local the video store. Video store. We did, they were it's before Blockbuster. They we had this nice like little local video store behind the world's greatest pizza parlor. Uh, so we would pick up a, a little Barlow's pizza. And then go grab a, like a random VHS from the the corner store. It was great. Um, nice, yeah, good stuff. 19, yeah, Red Dawn, Wolverines. All right. Well, moving on to number three. Boy, this feels so Isn't short. Only doing top fives. I know. Yeah. It feels it feels weird. All right. Done seven. RoboCop. Now I hey, I know I. But he's talking about RoboCop again. You know I almost didn't put this on my list because I was like, is this me talking about RoboCop again? <laughs> yes, it is. I know. I'm sorry. I need to stop putting it on. Hey, lists. by the way, how good of a TV show, RoboCop TV show, like on HBO? You should have put that on the TV. List. Oh, I thought you were the talking TV about show. like the actual TV show that they did, and that was horrible. No, no, like like. No, do, doing like a one right now, like real graphic and gory oh, and like man. involve all the social issues of today and then put putting it like into a police officer who's like just and Dude, it, just it'd be, I it'd mean, be interesting. If we could get Peter Weller back. Oh, gosh. He's, what's he doing? He's going to be around. He's, he's in. I, I just got I just got word confirming Dude. that Peter Weller is in. Dude, I would be I would be all over that. Um, but this. OK, so this came out in, I believe, 1987. Um, I didn't see it in theaters, but I know I saw it shortly after that. And so I'm guessing I was about seven years old when I saw this. Now, I have a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a four-year-old. So, my, you know, two of my kids are older now than I was when I saw this movie. And while I cannot wait to show them this movie, I cannot imagine showing them this movie right now. And that's including my nine-year-old. My nine-year-old would hate this movie. I mean, this movie is so violent. Like, I mean, the violence is... uh, A lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, be- between Murphy getting shot to pieces, literally to pieces, as like five, <laughs> six guys just stand there with shotguns and machine guns and just, just blow this top, poor guy so to good. shreds. And and this this was before CG was really big. You know, like the Ed 209, you know, has like some... Uh, some special effects. I don't know if it, it wasn't CG. I don't think. I think it might have been, um, I don't know, uh, miniatures or something like that. Uh, but um, but Paul Verhoeven, who who directed this, like loved having the the weird like robot actors that he did the same thing in Total Recall, right? Where you've got right. like th- this robot looking thing that it looks like the main actor that then you can just blow up 
or you can do weird things with that you can't do with the actor. And so you've right. got like this robot Peter Weller just like yelling as he's going like that and he's he just getting blown apart, you know. <laughs> so violent so much and then the ed 209 shooting people like when the ed 209 walks into the the boardroom towards the end and like shoots a guy and then just continues to shoot the guy and you think it's done no it's just gonna keep shooting the guy and it keeps cutting back and forth between ed 209 shooting and this guy laying on a table that's just like like just getting hit and then back to Ed 209 and back to the guy getting shot. It, it, like, and it goes on so long. It goes on so long. This guy just getting pumped full of bullets. Like, oh my gosh. Now, I love this movie to death. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. But my goodness, don't show a seven year old this movie. It's way too violent, <laughs> way too violent. I saw this and I was way too young. And, and granted, now I, I can't really blame my parents too much. For whatever reason, the marketing people for this movie figured out some way that they were like, you know what, we have this hard R movie that is full of violence and language. You know what we should do? Let's make toys. And so they're making all these really right. cool robo cop toys and i had the robocop toys you know the the ones where yeah, his helmet too. comes off <laughs> and they have the gun and, you know like all this stuff and so yes of course i'm gonna want to see this movie and of course you know i i think i saw this originally when i was visiting my dad you know and so it was just like oh yeah sure you know we'll watch we'll watch this you've got the toy we'll watch the movie you know it just that makes sense right but like uh you know boy oh boy yeah that's. Can, can I read to you the description of the opening scene with uh, where Murphy's getting shot? Oh, please do. On the parents, on the parents guide? Please do. It's, just, this, it's, it's rough. Very detailed description of the scene. <laughs> right. uh, it's, it's, the, the, the violence uh, is, is, is a very long one. <laughs> Murphy's hand is blown off at close range with a shotgun. He is shown uh, holding the bloody stump while blood pours from the wound. The arm of that same hand is then blown off. This is all done for the amusement of the men shooting him. The band of men finally proceed to fire on him continuously, each with shotguns and machine guns, laughing sadistically. Even though Murphy is shot so extensively, his body is protected with the Kevlar suit, which shields his body from the bullets, so it only feels the force of the bullets. Because of the Kevlar suits, he survives the attack, and one of the men finishes him with a single shot to his head. The back of his skull is visibly blown out, there's a shot of the aftermath of the attack showing his body surrounded by blood and gore, an incredibly brutal, graphic, and disturbing scene. Even with the Kevlar suit, this can be quite painful to watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and that's just one of the scenes. That's just one of the scenes. They're, just one of the scenes. The, I mean, that's like... Not, that's, by the way, not, not how Kevlar suits work, by the way. You're not... Yeah, you're, you're not going to survive that onslaught of bullets. The, no, anyway. you, you get your arms and legs blown off and a bullet in the head and you, and you survive. Um, you know... That's not even including the guy that got toxic waste spilled all over him that yeah, then gets yeah. hit by a car and explodes. Oh, Charlie, I love this movie so much. But please, don't show your kids. I, I, uh, I snuck into the second one. Uh, I don't know if you ever pulled the uh, buy the ticket for the oh, sure. movie you're old enough to see and then sneak into the, to the hard R. But uh, yeah, this is one that we successfully pulled it off. I got kicked out of a few uh, for sneaking in. You know, you sneak in there and you're thinking, oh, we made it, we made it. And then the usher comes, that little flashlight. Yeah. Let me see your ticket. Let me see your ticket. Like, no, I, I'm allowed to be here. I mean, I'm 17. <laughs> now, Charlie, let me, let me ask you because, okay, here's one thing that I worry about making this list, right? My wife watches this. And these are all movies that I want to show my kids. And all she's, okay. she's going to say, well, eventually. And she's going to say, you made this list. You don't even agree that the kids should watch this. And I say, well, no, not right now, obviously. Okay. What do you think a good age to show the kids RoboCop would be? Uh, well, first of all, they'd have to want to watch it. So I would start with maybe a RoboCop trailer. Uh, oh, we've watched the trailer. Oh, we've watched the trailer already. Oh, gosh. 
<laughs> Which one of your kids was was excited? Uh, did, uh, well, my I, my I, two I sons, imagine. my two sons were excited. You, you can't. You, we you, we also we also play the theme song because it's an awesome thing song, you know. What about what? Why don't you start with some gateway movies? So introduce them to, uh, you know. So you have the Marvel films for a little bit of like hand to hand violence, and start working your way through some of the PG thirteen, um, you know, like war films or you know make sure you see some heads getting blown off and some things uh lots of gunfire uh, the, the good thing for you and like remember i told that story about about you know darth vader's helmet coming off and and it's luke's face underneath after he's beheaded in star wars my kids just start erupting in laughter yeah. it's gonna be scary and traumatizing they're like that looks so dumb <laughs> uh that probably by the time your kids are teenagers they're not gonna be able to watch this and really like not take it seriously anyway. They're probably like he, Robocop shoots out like a, an, an attacker's crotch at some point in the film. It's a great scene. Uh, you know, it, right through the lady's <laughs> dress. It's a great scene. I you mean, I, I I mean, I I saw this when I was probably about nine, and but I'd seen so I I'd lived a whole lifetime by nine, bro. I mean, it, it was, I uh, I saw I saw it at seven. Do you think ten is too early? I, I look. Let me put it this way: I have a ten-year-old, and I'm not. I have no intention of showing them RoboCop anytime soon. There's nothing on my list that I'm like. I can't wait to show that to my kids. All of these movies are ones where I'm like, shouldn't have seen them, but I saw them, and <laughs> not making those mistakes. <laughs> okay. Well, the, with the, with the exception of Animal House, they don't they don't need to see Animal House. But I think, think I think maybe all of the others. Uh, that one. That one. That one. Yeah, all the others, I, I, the crow can wait. The crow is is extremely dark. Definitely the, the new the new uh, Godzilla Kong movie. My my ten year old is, is super excited. I'm gonna watch that with him. Yeah, uh, we and actually that's kind of like. I, know, that's, I, that's the jaws of their generation. I just watched we for my my son just had his eighth birthday, and so for his birthday we had a monster movie marathon. So we watched Kong Skull Island, and. Godzilla King of the Monsters back to back. It was cool. They enjoyed them. Um, you know, they can they can do violence. They've seen all the Marvel stuff. So, I don't know. I'm thinking like yeah. 10 or 11 maybe for RoboCop. Yeah, I mean this is just a different kind of violence. So, so I mean, it's totally up to you. Um, I no, I need like to I, I need to justify this for my wife though, Charlie. She okay, she, yeah, no, she look, trusts Amy's you. the boss. She trusts you, Charlie. Uh, Amy, d- don't do it when Brody thinks it's right. Do it when you think it's right. No, 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 no. Don't just don't say that. Don't say that. But it should always, look. It, it, you guys are co-parenting this together, so it should always fall to the person who's maybe a little less comfortable, unless you can, you know, come up with some compelling reason why they should watch RoboCop. Because because it hard is hard for a, me to think. Hard for me to think of one. It is a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a good uh, movie. Man. Cinematic history, Charlie. All right, let's All right, move on you, you, to you number tell me what you two. Can, <laughs> No, no, no. Number three. Number three for me. Oh, you're you number three. Tell me when you think it's appropriate for us to show our kids this next movie, bro. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so behind me here is the scene <laughs> where this gentleman's throat is about to be ripped out <laughs> by Patrick Swayze. He's got his throat ripping grip right here. Yeah. And he's about to go in there right there and just take, take that young man's Adam's apple and throat right out. Yeah. Because... Roadhouse. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> this is the of, on the of the five movies on my list. This is the oldest uh, that I was when I watched this movie. I, so okay. I must have been like eleven when I saw this or so. And it's got a lot of sex, yes, a lot does. of violence, a lot of drinking, a lot of cursing, fighting. You name it. And it sticks in my mind because the my my parents on my mom's side lived in Denver. And we visited them a few times when I was a kid. And they came to visit us one time. Uh, so I, I, I met my, my mom's mom like maybe three times, okay. four times in my life. And I'm watching Roadhouse on HBO by myself in the living room. I've never seen it. I have no idea what is happening. And, uh, you know, and instead of me trying to describe the scene, I'll let the parents guide tell you what's happening in the scene mm. that my grandma's about to walk in on. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> So you didn't watch a this man. with your grandma? <laughs> no, no. She just oh. walked. She, she literally just the whole movie's going and she walks in as a man. Steve is thrusting into a woman. Steve's girl 
from behind in the stock room. He makes a comment about her being his regular Saturday night thing. We see her bare breasts and buttocks briefly. And he's, so he's just, and, and flopping things. Gosh. And grandma's like, she walks in and sees this. And she's like, this is disgusting. You're <laughs> disgusting. And walks out. And then, and I'm like, I, I, I just watching him. I don't know. The guys, the guys' throats are getting ripped out, grandma. Now, how, how old were for. you? How old were you? I was like a, about eleven. Okay, okay. So oh, uh, that's maybe wrong. maybe ten, but uh, in that ten to eleven range. But I didn't know I didn't know what was happening. So it was look, it's very violent, and but Patrick Swayze, like this is dirty, it's dirty dancing. It's dirty dancing, right? yeah. He's dirty dancing. He's and he's and he's such a nice guy in the movie. I mean, look, the guy who got his throat ripped had it coming. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear about this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was uh, not a great, not a great uh, movie at that age, and will forever be just singed in my brain of that of my grandma's just over the top Polish reaction to my <laughs> to my watching that that particular scene. Oh man, oh that's so sad. I'm sorry that happened to you, Charlie. That's rough. And this doesn't get like the and the. By the way, where's the poetic version of? It just says one fight scene where a man rips a chunk of another man's throat out. Where's where's the poetry here? Like there was for for RoboCop. Give me give yeah, me some right? give me some angst. Give me some back. Like like where's the where's the heart in that? There's sure. Just, that's very matter of fact. I, I this guy wasn't written as uh, this was it's too it's too scientific. No, we need that person that wrote the Jaws description to write all these things. Yeah. Please. I, d I did appreciate this line, and I apologize in advance. Cover earmuffs, kids. But there are two sheen there are two scenes which show pubic hair. One female, somewhat challenging to notice, and the other male, <laughs> a focal point of the conversation, hard to miss. <laughs> it's like challenging to notice. So you gotta like you gotta like look <laughs> for it. You really gotta. I slow down and paused at four minutes and twenty six seconds in, and there's a tiny pubic hair sticking out right there. <laughs> But the male one was very easy to spot. I don't know why. I, I, that's what Amy sounds like sometimes. <laughs> oh, I love when you blow kisses to my wife. <laughs> do, we, do we ever need to explain that we're both married to an Amy, or do we just nope. let that ride? No, we'll just let it ride. Okay. All right. On that same, note, same Amy. number two. <laughs> All right. My number two... Alien. Nice. This almost made my list. This Did it? Way. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing I was about eight years old when I saw this. Uh, I remember my dad was visiting, and uh, me and him and my sisters watched this at the house. Uh, I one in particular memory that I have is during the end battle when. Um, What's the what's the android's name? Do you remember? Are you talking about Data? No, that's Star Trek, man. Come on. The android. Okay, so he gets so he gets ripped Q. apart. No, no, he gets ripped apart, and his 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 blood is white. And I remember I got up to go get a glass of milk. Huh? Bishop. 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 Yes, thank you. Um, I went to get a glass of milk and I walked back in with my glass of milk as all this is happening. And my older sister was like, sure, you want to drink that milk right now? <laughs> um, now, now this is, this is another fabulous movie. I absolutely adore this movie. Um, this is one that I, I do look forward to showing my kids. Uh, I think that yeah. the the first and second Aliens in particular are phenomenal movies that are full of action and horror and I think they're just so well made. Um, but I I I did see these when I was probably too young. Um, you know the. The way that the xenomorphs, you know, kill and chest burst and do all this stuff. You know, I was sure. eight is probably, probably too young for this. Um, now, ten. We'll see about ten. But, yeah. This, look, this, this one, I would, I would 
I would contend is a pre Robocop showing. I could I, I think this is a less first of all, I, I can't imagine that your kids wouldn't be bored out of their minds watching this film. Because it's a slow burn. Aliens? You think really? It's, it's a it's a slow burn, bro. It's a slow burn. I mean, I would say that for probably the first one, they'd probably get bored with oh. the first ones. Oh, it's a real slow one. I, okay, you know what? You, sh- you show it to them, then you tell me. I maybe mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably projecting because I think my kids would be bored out of their minds. Is the second uh, one you know, slow? I Now, I haven't seen these in a number of years. I haven't watched either one in a number of years. I I feel like I the, I need to. This, 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 this genre of storytelling is one of my favorites, and it was from a time where they just didn't have the technology to like really show you i mean the alien looked awesome in this by the way at least at least uh, at least it did when i was when i was a kid but you know they they set up atmosphere and let that atmosphere just build and build that tension sure. right so you're just kind of like you're waiting you know it's coming you saw the first one you know it's coming and yeah. they just keep kind of like they're kind of slow playing. There's a there's a slow burn to it. You got to be invested into it. You, you know, lights out. You got your popcorn. You're really watching it. This is not a you know sit on the phone and scroll kind of and then ha- and, you know jump scare kind of thing. You know, it's it's, like, it's a sci-fi horror with like a nice slow. Like when I say slow burn, I don't I don't mean it's bo- I don't think it's boring. Uh, for me, I, I love this movie. I think it's great. Yeah. But I mean, like these a lot of these older movies, I just think are going to be if you try to show them to a kid too young that you know look sure there's some there's some violence and scary stuff but the bigger the bigger danger if uh that's that's a terrible choice of words for this particular conversation but uh would be that the kids are just like this is stupid and i don't want to watch it whereas like True. robocop starts away with like instant instantaneous action and, and there's you know a guy getting his whole body blown to bits you know you might get 20 minutes into aliens and your kids are like tired of dialogue tired of the talking tired of like eight, these 80s haircuts and you know bad looking video and they're like dad what are we doing here? Get me yeah. out of here. Nothing's happened. Uh, so you, got, you just got to wait till they're at an age where they can appreciate the building of the suspense. Oh, well, that's true. That's my point. That's true. No, and, and that's a good point, you know. Um, but this, I, you know, and I'll show them one and two, and I don't know what else I'll show them. But definitely one and two. But this one, this one in, I, I have fond memories of, but I was probably too young. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna text. I'm gonna text your wife real quick and ask her uh, what what age she thinks the kids should uh, watch RoboCop. Okay, can't wait to to hear. Um. <laughs> All right, Charlie, your number two. When you're oh ready. Oh my gosh, my number two. You ready? Okay. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay. My my phone does not like the word RoboCop. Force it. Okay. Sam, ready. Okay. Ready for number two. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh man. Okay. So, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 was the first of the Nightmare on Elm Streets that I saw. And this came out really? in 1987. So, I saw this when I was about eight. Okay. Uh, on HBO. And I remember it was daytime, which was probably good. And I was in <laughs> our downstairs living room, which had which had the HBO on it. And, and the movie came on, and I was just watching it. And I'd heard of the Nightmare on Elm Streets from my older sister. And, and, and so, I, I kind of knew of Freddy. Sure. This is the third movie. In my opinion, by the way, the best of the franchise, or at least probably my favorite, and maybe just because it was the first one I saw. But I just started watching it. It was like it like popped on as like the next movie, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll watch this. Um, there, there was there's some familial backdrop stuff that I'm I'm not going to get into, but there's you know part, there's also there's some other like reasons why I had such limited amounts of supervision when I was, <laughs> I was younger. Uh, but there was also so there's part of me that kind of grew up fast and kind of I think there was part of like uh, eight to nine year old Charlie's idea that like, hey, I'm basically grown up now and I'm going to prove it by watching, you know, these kind of scary movies and I'm sure. not going to be scared. Uh, so I think there's, some, there's some psychology behind why I sat and kind of watched some of these, too. Um, and so, so, you know, this is a very graphic movie. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to kind of like I could not find a really not disturbing image to put behind me for this. So if I move just a little bit, you'll see. <laughs> That this guy's like oh, being geez. tied to a bed by like all of his like veins from his arms that Freddie has like eviscerated. It's a very uh, distur- disturbing film. Uh, face great is poster the though. TV. Look at that poster. That's a great poster. Right? And who would? And uh, the idea that you're never safe even when you're sleeping. Who wouldn't want that idea introduced to you when you're a young person? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> go ahead, go to bed. See if that saves you, kid. <laughs> So this is this is you know very violent. Um, uh, on, on, my my friend Tu Dong swears up and down that the uh, the the female uh, one of the female characters in this uh, I, think, I think it's Jennifer Rubin is like a doppelganger for my wife. Uh, so if you if you guys are curious about what uh, my Amy looks like, you can look up the career arc of Jennifer Rubin, circa Dream Warriors. I guess uh, you know maybe, maybe I'll toss a picture of her on the screen. You guys can judge, but. Um, and by you guys, I of course mean Amy's parents who are who are watching faithfully. Uh, but uh, so look, this is uh, not a friendly, child friendly movie, and not one sure, Brody, that no. I would recommend you show uh-huh. your kids anytime soon. No. Uh, but uh, this, this is know, way past yeah. ten. They should be way past ten to see this movie. <laughs> but I, I liked it, and it made me want to. Uh, so I ended up watching the like pr- after I finished this one, I pursued the others first one i enjoyed the second one is one of the worst movies that i've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life and the fourth one was fine and then i think there's one where like they're like all the other ones were just movies oh but was, now that new he's real. was that yeah, new nightmare was that yeah some and i saw that in the theaters and that that might be the worst oh, I, the other one was that one was of that might so be the bad. actual worst that movie i've so ever bad. seen it was all a movie <laughs> but now it's real but now it's real now yeah it's it was real. Uh, something else <laughs> Uh, oh, but yeah. yeah, I did. What, how old? How old were you? What was the first like, like real horror movie you remember seeing when you were a kid? Oh gosh, um, you know, I I was thinking about horror movies to put on this list. I want to say that it was probably The Thing, uh, and I okay. saw that fairly. That's a nice slow burn. Speaking of slow burns. <laughs> fairly young you know it's it's you know it's interesting oh okay i guess i put some glasses on her but yeah yeah maybe um you know i was i was probably around that like eight to nine it's interesting that that for both of us most of these movies are coming at about the age of eight or nine yeah um apparently that was just like the time where you could just watch whatever you want in the well, late 80s. I actually, I actually kind of thought about this for, for myself. Is it, I had trouble <clears> wanting <throat> to put movies on after this age because as soon as you've seen some of these at like eight or nine, like what am I gonna what am I gonna watch at eleven? Yeah, twelve or thirteen. That's gonna you know, it's gonna be worse than what I saw when I was younger than this. You know, like I sure these are, these were pretty. You know, I and I did see you know I I saw saw plenty of of horror movies after this and slasher flicks and. All sorts of uh, you know weird, and you'll. And this isn't even number one. So I saw something more disturbing. This uh, younger than this, as a matter of fact, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, there was a, a you know I'll save it. I'll save it. Okay. I'll save it for the next one. All right. Well. Let's get to your number one. Let's move on to number one. Charlie, you have any guesses? Oh, uh, so it's not a horror film. It's going to be something. Uh, it's got to be something from the. Is it from the eighties? No. Oh, Basic Instinct. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. All right. Well, it's gonna be. We've talked about it before. I think. Total, I've, total Recall. I've. No. Uh. Uh-uh. No. I was. I was right at the perfect age. Right, like that. Ooh, nine. Ten. The Fifth Element. No. It's got to be the Fifth. Come element. on. I was I like. I, I was like. We can't have an episode where we don't talk about the fifth element. Sixteen when that came out. <laughs> Too young. Yeah. Nope. It is Terminator Two: Judgment oh, Day. Oh, come on! You, this one you can show your kids right now. Go ahead. I pro. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. So this one is number one. Um, really like. <sighs> I I put this as number one because it kind of had a special time for me in like, this was one of the few, actually I think the only one from this list that I saw in theaters. And so I, it was when my... It's a sneaker, huh? You snuck in? No, huh? (laughs) It was my mom and her fiance, the one that showed me Animal House, took me on a date with them to see this movie. 
Huh. And, and right. so it was like I was with them. They actually, and I'm not sure why, but they bought their tickets and then gave me cash and had me buy my own ticket. And I remember the cashier being like, how old are you? And then they were like, oh, he's with us. But I was still buying my own ticket. I don't know why they did it. I'm not sure. It's interesting. But then they, but then they kind of laughed about it. Maybe they just wanted to see what would happen. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but see, I was see if you could pull it off. Look, in their defense, in '91, you had a full beard. So I mean, like, <laughs> well, who, who's gonna think you're okay. too young? Okay. So, so here's 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 the special thing: is I actually found a picture of me and my mom. Aww. The night that we went to see this, okay? You ready for this? Oh yeah, show me, show me, show me. So there, there Aww. I am in 1991, all all I dressed like up to go see Terminator 2, okay? Look at me with with my pumps sneakers on, right? Uh, you're ready. You're ready. I I went revolution. into this movie as an adorable little man. And I came out a full-grown man. This, this movie, it's, it's violent. It is violent. It's, it, it is violent. You know, and it's, um, it's violent. It's kind of scary. You know, at, for, for nine years old, I remember being scared of the T-1000. You know, because you never know where he was. There's like the times where right. he, you know, he turns his himself into weapons and he pokes through like a guy's eye at one point. You don't, you don't really see it, but you see blood, you know, and just the tension of like uh, the T-1000 chasing them. And, and especially because you have John Connor, who was like the same age that... I was, you know, and so I'm putting myself in John Connor's position of right. like, I've got this machine that's trying to kill me, you know, chasing me. And, and uh, you know, it's, there's lots of violence, there's lots of blood, there's the whole like future sequence where Sarah Connor has the vision of, uh, you know, the, the doomsday and, and you know the atomic bomb or, or whatever it is that that right. she's holding on to the fence and it blows and it just like blows all of her skin off and she's just like a skeleton I remember watching that in theaters and being like like what is happening right now I hadn't seen the first one and so all that stuff you know anything that the first one had set up you know I didn't understand and so this was all new to me and yeah so it's this this is another movie that i adore i think this is a great movie i think that you know the action and having arnold really like i think this is arnold in his prime um you know is is just great and the technology that went into it having the t1000 which was like cutting edge technology at the time you know, it's exciting. All that stuff. But really, to see it in theaters <laughs> at, at eight years old, that's what it was. It was eight because yeah. it came out in July of 1991. So, yeah, I hadn't even turned nine yet. So I was, I was eight when I saw this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something. Great movie. Can't wait to show my kids. But, yeah, not at eight. And not in the theaters. Maybe eight at home, where you're kind of in a safe place. Being in a dark theater, where it's really loud, probably not. Yeah. So. Your, your wife did respond to me. She, oh. said, uh, she said 45 oh. uh, was the age that the kids should be when they see Robocop finally. Mm. And then she followed up with maybe 39, so they can impress a future spouse. Maybe. So, no, I, I, I have to side with Amy on this one. No, 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 I, I got to. I got Charlie, to. you're supposed He's to be on my side. Me as... My side, Charlie. Oh, 10. <laughs> so, 
what, before we get to my number my number one, would you like to hear a little bit of trivia about Robert Patrick's penis? Um, from the Terminator Two movie. Sure. Uh, Robert Patrick's character's butt and penis can be seen very briefly as he crouches down. His penis is only visible in all releases up to the Skynet Edition Blu-ray release. His penis was removed with CGI for the 3D theatrical release and the Blu-ray 3D and 4K releases. Note that the digital copy that comes with the 4K Blu-ray does show his penis, but not the 4K Blu-ray or regular Blu-ray. So I didn't know that. And now I've learned something and I feel great being able to share that with you folks. Can you well. imagine being the uh, special effects person that had to go in? They're like, listen, if you slow down when he's crouching down, <laughs> you can get a little hint of his penis. We need you to go in there and just <laughs> zoom in and just remove that yep. little piece right there. Just a little, just a little bit of bob it and just cut, whoop, like, cut it up. Like the person that's like, you know what I did? <laughs> yeah. I oh, you want to talk penis. about career accomplishments? Terminator. <laughs> You'll notice in this edition. Ha- have you ever seen Terminator 2? <laughs> now you see it now you don't that's me i'm the guy interesting Uh, interesting so the i meant to tell you i meant to to start this all of this off because you were talking about going to the theaters with your with your parents and the awkward sensation there uh i remember going to see Watchmen in the theaters and obviously i I was a grown man at the time but there was a family behind me with like a nine or ten year old kid who someday will be doing a list much like this (laughs) and that will be number one (laughs) And there's, if you've ever seen the uh, the Watchmen movie, there is a long sex scene long. where they're playing like Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, long. which is just, and it just keeps going. And and I I just and I'm so uncomfortable. I just want to be like, you know, like just, just don't look, kid. What are you? Why are you guys here? And like the whole movie is like inappropriate for it totally you know, that. Is. It's like. And so I don't know if they just thought, oh, it's a comic book movie. We'll bring the kids. Sure. You know, it'd be great. I, or, I, I can or, almost guarantee it. And and, and they, they didn't leave. They watched the whole thing. So I, but the whole movie, like I couldn't, like it wasn't a great film anyway. Much better HBO show. Uh, much, much better. And a much better graphic novel. But uh, I couldn't enjoy even what I could enjoy the film because the whole movie, I, everything that happened, I was like, just <sighs> the boy behind me. The boy. It's you know it's funny that you say that because I had nearly the exact same situation, but it was a grandpa and his probably nine <laughs> ten year old grandson sitting directly in front of us during Gosh. Watchmen, <laughs> where where uh, we Amy and I were sitting there and they walked in and sat down and I was like, they have no idea what they're about to watch. Excuse me, uh, <laughs> sir, just so you know. <laughs> this is not for the faint of heart. This is not a normal superhero movie. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness, that's, that's funny. too funny. All right. All right, you ready for my number one, bro? Number one, I cannot wait. It is, once we get past, oh, look, there he is. Look at that innocent young man. <laughs> There's my number one. That's the scariest thing I ever saw. <laughs> oh, my, yeah, Wow. Yeah. Full metal jacket. Okay. How, was, how uh, old were nine, you? I was eight when I saw this, and uh, eight, eight to eight to nine in that in that range. Jeez. And this was the first v- Vietnam War movie I saw, and I saw a Platoon and a bunch of uh, like in and around this. This was the uh, my my cousin Matt had come to stay with us. <laughs> I and remember Matt. <laughs> he's he's an odd fellow. He, like you know you know how like you there's. You see these interviews with like family members after like uh, they find out that someone in the family is like a serial killer and they're all like, we had no idea or like neighbors. Oh, he was such a nice guy. Oh, man. If if it ever comes up that there's like a bunch of Jeez. bodies buried in his basement someday and they come to interview me, I'll be like, yeah, I've been trying to tell everyone in my family that since I was a kid. I know he's a janitor at a high school for crying out loud. Uh, my sister lived with him briefly, and he'd laugh out loud when the women were getting stabbed watching American Psycho. Uh, he's it's just an odd fellow. He he would he spent the night in, in I didn't have a I didn't have a room growing up, so I, I was li- sleeping in the living room on a couch, and then he, they brought in like a little makeshift bed for him, and he rented 
best chest in the West. I was like six. <laughs> and he's watching this like breast contest. Oh my god. And I and I, I and I'm like, I'm not I'm not I don't want I'd have no interest in this at all. I just and and, and why is this older <laughs> man watching this content in front of me? anyway. So somewhere in Colorado there is a basement full of bodies. <laughs> And when, so when I was, uh, you know, right around this time in like 80, 87, 88, like, like he had, he came to stay with us. Uh, he's, he, he visited several times throughout the eighties and he would always just record a bunch of things off HBO on a VHS and then just would leave the cassettes around. <laughs> and so gonna make a man out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this one, I was like, okay, well, there's, you know, guns and stuff. We weren't allowed to have guns in the house. We, I just, just helping my mom clean the garage and found this plastic banana that she had hidden when I was like five because I pulled it out and was playing with it like it was a gun because it had the right curvature. <laughs> yeah. So I could hold, there's just a banana, you can picture a banana. I should have, should have brought the, my banana out here, but so just picture, you know, a banana here. And she's like, you can't play with guns, so I'm gonna hide this. And so she, we just found that now. So now, oh now I have it back. Uh, I can I can play with my, my toy gun oh, banana. Oh, funny. Um, but anyway, uh, so it was like, oh, this was alluring to me. This movie is nuts, and it is it is like really graphic and really intense. And oh my gosh, they do not pull any punches. And whether it's like you know people getting beat with like soap, so soap like socks, in socks, soap and oh my gosh, you know, people people blowing their own brains out, kids getting shot in the gut. I didn't uh, see this till I was like thirty. Oh my goodness! It was so intense, and the scene that always got me because you're kind of like following this platoon around this unwinnable war, and just watching all the the horror and uh, and it's really like the movie is really two parts. You have like the training, and then you have yeah. like the war. Yeah. Uh, and it gets that war, and I'll, I'll let I'll let the parental guide kind of describe the scene to you because it'll do it better than than my memory. But a man is shot in the leg by a sniper. Blood gushes out, and he falls to the ground, screaming in pain. He is then shot again in the chest. A ton of blood spurts out. Another soldier, a soldier tries to rescue him, but he gets shot in the kidney. Lots of blood sprays. He screams in pain as well. He then gets shot in the arm with lots of blood spurting. Both men are then violently gunned down by the sniper. Lots of blood spurts. The whole bodies are covered in blood. The entire sequence is extremely brutal. This is like this intense scene where they're pinned down by the sniper and they're getting hit. And these guys are shot and just lying in the open ground, screaming in agony. Blood's coming out and the sniper is just pinning him down with gun, people getting shot in the head and this it just the yeah. whole thing was like and i'm just watching this like you know like oh my gosh what am, what am i doing you know and i couldn't i couldn't look away and this was probably one of my i i i think i probably rewatched this like three or four times uh af, after this just because it was like so i, I don't know it riveting i guess for a lack of a better word i saw it, it, it was way too young uh, and then, and then you know, then it's like, okay, well, let's I'll watch other war movies, and let's let's watch Platoon, and okay, well, let's check out Apocalypse Now, and let's see what other, you know, what other treasures are out there. Uh, there weren't a lot of like nice, uh, nice war films, uh, you know, and nor should there be, you know, like hey, look at even even Biloxi Blues uh, was was a downer. I I I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it was it was real real graphic stuff. So. This is not one, Brody, that I recommend you take you take out for the kids anytime mm, soon. No, nope, um, no. Nope, although, nope. if you've never seen this as an adult, it is a it is a really compelling. My my uh, uncle Kurt, who I've talked about, uh, he was he was in the Vietnam War, and he had, he would just he had stories and just I mean it just the stuff that soldiers went through over there and just this I mean just such a, a crazy chapter in in the history of this country and all over the world really. Uh, it's just just wild uh to uh, and, I don't know, anyway i it's it's a uh, it's quite a film it is i mean as with most stanley kubrick movies <laughs> none, none of them are really kid movies at all no um, no, no or should no, or should be shown to kids he made no kid movies specifically kid movies but none of them should be <laughs> kubrick, shown to kids. kids none of them should be oh gosh kubrick full metal jacket for kids oh yeah yeah no, Kubrick is there. A, it is, an bro. Adult filmmaker. Well, he did make Eyes Wide Shut, so whatever, <laughs> whatever. I never saw that. <laughs> you never saw that? 
I did not. Oh. It didn't. I I don't know. It didn't. It didn't hold an interest for me. <clears throat> I mean, I, of, you know, I mean, I took a Stanley Kubrick class in college, so in that class we watched every Stanley Kubrick movie. Hey, no judgments. We are. This is a judgment-free zone, especially after a list like this uh, from our childhood. Uh, this is a judgment, judgment-free zone. Yeah. Please don't show your kids Full Metal Jacket. Robocop. That's okay. Terminator Two. Good choice. When they're a little bit older. Full Metal Jacket. Nope. That's like. Well, what, what age are you gonna what, what age are you gonna pull out Beverly Hills Cop? <sighs> See, I I don't think my kids would be interested at all in Beverly Hills Cop. You don't like Eddie Murphy? I mean, I I think it's fine. Um, I don't think my kids would be interested in the slightest. Man, I loved Coming to America when that came out. Was like. One of my favorites. And Have I, you I watched? When was the last time you watched that movie, Charlie? It's been a little while, maybe like six to eight years. That movie is like two and a half hours long. It is great. so long. It is but so long. That this it should have been long. This, it should have been a TV show. It could have been a TV show, but my goodness, I saw it maybe maybe ten years ago. Okay, and I and I watched it, and I was like. Man, it feels like it's going on a long time. And then I looked at the runtime, and it's what 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 is what is the runtime of of coming to America? Because it's it's like an hour longer than it needs to be. I I don't know about that. It's it's uh, Eddie Murphy, the height of his powers, being Eddie Murphy. You got Arsenio Hall. It was. Uh, it's an hour and fifty-seven minutes, Charlie. An hour that's, fifty-seven that's minutes. You're complaining about an hour fifty-seven. It's less than two hours. You just said two and a half hours. You just shaved 33 minutes off your runtime. Yeah. It, already. It, it, it shouldn't be that long. It shouldn't be that long. I, I'm on, I, I'm, we, we should do it. We should watch the sequel and then we can do uh, uh, Coming to America rewatch we'll party with and, Coming to America 2. And I'm not saying I don't like the movie. The movie's enjoyable. But I was it surprised. Sounds like you're saying you I don't was, like the movie. I was very surprised when the movie ended up being two hours. Because it's, all movies were like two hours back then. It's it's a little slow. It's a little slow, and in the slow parts, you, it's, it's kind of. You think low. Aliens moves fast? It's kind of low, and that uh, and that Coming to America moves slow. It's at least exciting. What's happening? At least it's exciting, though. Coming to America is exciting. How is it exciting? A young Sam Jackson trying to rob McDonald's or McDowell's, excuse me. Soul Glow, Brody. The movie's hysterical. It's it's, beautiful. it's, beautiful. it's funny. Could have been a half hour less. I, okay, I, I, I am willing to bet money that Coming to America Two is less than two hours. Okay, I, I well, first of all, that's a, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up right now, so we will see <clears throat> just how it's not out yet, is it? I don't even right. know. Hour forty four for Coming to America Two. Oh, see, so they so they cut off. Oh, it's like nine minute nine minutes less. They nine minutes. Baloney. You said like 153 minutes, huh? You said oh, 157. It's 157. Like, it's like basically 15 minutes. 15 no, minutes. No, 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 no. 15 minutes would be 142. It's less. That's what I'm saying. It is less. It's less. And okay, and let's see. How long was Aliens? Let's see. Aliens was runtime of two aliens. hours and 17 minutes. You get action. You get action on the planet. Eventually. You get action in space. Eventually. You get Eventually. you get the queen. There is so much to do. Eventually. There's all these characters. Man, Eventually. come now, come Same. now, Charlie. Don't give me that. Aliens is a great movie and worth when, every minute. When you're when you're enjoying a film, it can be longer. And when you when you're not enjoying it, you're gonna feel it every dragged. minute. It dragged. It dragged. That's all I'm saying. All right. We'll agree to disagree on the Coming to America evaluation, and we'll have to watch the sequel, to be fair. Sure. All right. Well, I'd that's like, it, I'd bro. Like we did the it. Sequel. There we go. There we go. Our top five. Somehow, our top five came in right about the same time as our normal top tens, which yeah. we, we, we kind of expected. You know, a lot of these were going to take context. They were going to take stories. You know, why was this, you know, the personal stories? You know, we, we saw these two young... 
Um, what's, what's the context of us seeing these two young? So we anticipated it. That's why it's not a top 10, because then we would have been at two hours and we already get comments on yeah. the length of our episodes. And I'll, I'll toss out honorable mention to any movie that was made between 84 <coughs> and 91 did, that did you, you might ha- feel was inappropriate for Did a you have any honorable mentions that, that, you, that almost made your list? Uh, like Back to School I saw when I was on, uh, going to visit my grandma in a hotel on HBO. Same I, grandma? I think it might have been. Uh, the, this is my great-grandma, I Stone. No, oh. uh, different, uh, different, different side of the family. Gotcha. But yeah, like there's, there's a few like I could have put Friday the Thirteenth or, uh, you know, there's a few horror movies that I saw in addition to the like Child's Play, uh, you know, things like that. Just, I don't know. It just depends which which direction you wanted to go to. Like I, I didn't have a uh, a cartoon filled child. My favorite TV shows growing up were like Remington Steel and Perry Mason and Murder She Wrote, and uh, we watched a lot of crime shows in my family. So I, I, I liked a lot of more. I consumed more. I saw Foul Play when I was like five or six. That was that was a good movie. Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn. Not not too inappropriate. But like war movies, like anything after this, uh, that was you know Vietnam based, Platoon, Apocalypse. Now I saw all of those like way too young. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What are you gonna do? Bro? I I thought about putting Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom on mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, wanna say, I, I wanna say I wanna yeah good. I wanna say I was about six when I saw that and that was. I, I still think the most disturbing part of that when I was a kid was all the bugs. It was like oh, the, bugs, the bugs, or, or even like the the dinner table, like the food that they like ate. The monkey brains, with and, monkey yeah. brains, or when they had like the snake and they cut the snake open and the little eels came out. Yeah. Or maybe the most disturbing part of that was that he like jumped out of a an airplane with like an inflatable raft and survived. <laughs> Might have been like. <laughs> just kind I of, remember even being just a kid. slid down the mountain in an inflatable airplane. That, that or, or, movie uh, set me off on a raft. <laughs> I was like, that's genius. If I'm ever in a plane crash, oh all I have to do is jump out right before the plane crashes, and I survive. No there one's thought of this, bro. People die in plane crashes all the time because they don't think. You just jump out right before the plane hits. And I thought, there. I, there's vindication for, mm. for my little brain thinking I could survive a plane crash. I think Mythbusters actually did an episode on that. I think they on the said Indiana it. Jones. Yeah, I think it. I think it's not possible. You would die. I don't think you need to do a myth bust. <laughs> I. I don't think anyone's going. You no, know, that's real. Hey, you, you can know, do that. It, it's and then not. They up the ante. Like, I mean, he can survive a nuclear blast oh, just by being in a fridge. So, I mean, come on. Let's uh, let's not talk about. He's that. like invincible. That was the worst. Oh gosh, let's uh, let's. Bad. So Let's just end the episode before we oh, get too far. I did almost put the accidental tourist on this list because I was forced to watch it young, and it's just really boring to a child. The accidental? T- oh. I don't even know what that is. It's just a drama, and I and oh. I saw it like when I was a kid. I was like, oh, River's Edge was another one, like drug a drug suicide drama. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Young Keanu. Hey, Young Keanu. Oh, interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, Charlie, you have any closing thoughts? Hey, uh, we hope that this content wasn't too inappropriate for you. Uh, we love being with you. And, and a special shout out to Jody. Uh, Jody, if you're watching this, you've expressed interest in rewatching the Star Wars films. And I like to think that we've played a role in that. And I'd like to encourage you now that, that you should definitely check out those Star Wars films with an open mind and an open heart. Mm. And let those lovable little characters in, in, into you, your heart, into your soul into your life experience. May the force be with you. Uh, and let me know if you, ha- if you have any questions about the franchise. We got you coming. Thank you for watching, Jody. All right, Charlie, you want to wrap us up? Uh, all right, as always, click that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Feel free to drop us a comment about maybe some movies you saw a little bit too young. Uh, or let us know in the comments specifically what age Brody should let his kids see RoboCop. Do you agree with Amy? Ages 39 to 45. Do you agree with Brody tomorrow? Or are you I said between? 10. I said 10. I got... Yeah, 10 I, minutes from now. My oldest, my oldest son then... has got two years. Two years. Okay. Two years. All right, let us know. And we'll see you next time. Adios. Adios.